Hey y'all, good morning, and welcome to my Gulf Coast garden. I'm in Alabama. This is zone 9A, and my name's Rachel, and I love to garden for butterflies, and I'm so excited that y'all are here with me to look through my garden. Um, I've got some really cool, fun things to show you. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, different visitors to the garden this week, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, so come along and see what's going on. The army worms were just destroying the petunias, so I ripped all the petunias out. I didn't even want to bother just trying to deal with that. At first I thought, well, you know, I'll just sacrifice the petunias to the army worms and hopefully they'll leave everything else alone. But they just looked so sad and pathetic, I couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, look at the James Galloway rose. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, I'm loving it so much. Um, I wanted to show y'all in the circle garden today, the different things that I've got planted. I, uh, it turns out um, the cayenne pepper wasn't as much of a fix as I thought it would be because uh, I think the armadillo came a couple of nights and he was offended by the cayenne pepper, but then he just went home and got a gas mask and came back and laughed at me and just snuffled through everything with his whatever he had with him to keep him from sneezing. Um, so I have done a different thing here. Um, just look at this agastache. Is that not crazy? This is the tallest it has ever grown. But so here's what I've done. I have had to rescue some plants. I had to go get a couple more pots. I got them from Old Time Pottery in Foley in case you want to get some. And they're reasonable. It's really the only reasonable place that I can find those kind of um, clay pots that are, you know, made in Vietnam. So I had to... Um, rescue this salvia right here it had gotten dug up and thrown aside by the uh, armadillo and i rescued the diamond frost this is diamond frost uh, euphorbia and the vinca so this salvia and these they got uh, dug up and so i uh, had to ooh, i didn't mean to do that um, i had to rescue them and put them in their very own pots so that means i'm going to really have to babysit this uh, you cannot down here, you've got to water pots almost every day. We did have some rain yesterday afternoon, so thank God I'm not gonna have to water this morning. I probably will have to water this afternoon though. But um, I wanted to tell y'all about what I've got growing in the circle garden because I keep getting distracted. So see this little, uh, little kind of ground cover right here? That is called frog fruit or matchstick plant or fog fruit. Uh, this is uh, phlox, and you see that space, that dark space right there, that's where all my petunias and other things were that I had to rip out. So I'm going to plant, I think I might throw some seeds out and see what happens. Um, these light green things are Mexican heather. They don't seem to really be doing well, but maybe they can fill in the space now that there's more space to be had. Uh, this pokey stuff right here, that's called Ruelia. I've got, um, pink and blue and then behind it I left a little bit of the uh, lemon balm so it's you know taken off and then you know that's that coral nymph uh, salvia right there that's calibracoa and then look at the Russian sage look at how happy it is and we got that contest going between the Fox Farm and the Miracle Grow and I don't, I don't really think it's going to be fair because I think this side doesn't get as much sun as that side but you know if we want to I think that's a, the miracle crow side and that's the fox farm side that I use that potting soil so here's the swamp milkweed and it's about to flower I'm super excited about it I need to come in here and wash off some of the aphids um, and of course this pink is uh, pentas oh the butterflies love pentas get you some of those um, you know what? I can't remember what that is. I think it's verbena. Um, I've got two of them. I've got verbena here and then, of course, the penta. And this pot, I'm going to rescue some more plants in, so it's still kind of empty. And then there's that nymph coral salvia again. And uh, I've got some jewels of opar that just started, like, just popped up in that pot, and I'm letting it go. And uh, vinca. This is my favorite color of vinca right here. This is like a coral they call it coral I think it looks pink um, and then I've got in this pot right here this is pineapple sage I'll show you a 
larger specimen of that. Now over here, this is going to bloom some yellow flowers. This is, this is Coreopsis right here. This is just a tiny little Coreopsis that happened to make it. But this, I don't know what it's called. And um, I should have asked my friend Carol. But when it blooms, maybe I can take a picture of it and the phone will tell me. I don't know. You know, this is Dusty Miller. This is a kind of globe basil. More diamond frost euphorbia. And here's some dill that just popped up from seeds. Now, I had originally had the circle garden divided into quadrants. And I pulled out the little walkways because they got overgrown with the uh, lemon balm. And last year, you know, the circle garden just turned into the lemon balm show. And I didn't want that this year. I wanted to have everything else because a lot of this stuff I did plant, but it just didn't have a chance to really shine because the lemon balm took it over. So right here, this is wild bergamot and it is getting a little crazy. Look how tall it is. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like when it blooms because I didn't see it bloom last year. But this quadrant of the circle garden is like my favorite right now. Um, see that? That's wild petunia. Here's liatris. It's about to bloom. It's going to be purple. I've got something else blooming here that I'm super excited about because it was so tiny and pathetic last year when I planted it. But that is called mock bishop's weed. And the uh, giant, I mean, not giant swallowtails, but the black eastern swallowtails are going to love it. And then down here, I have this teeny tiny milkweed. This is, um, you know what? I don't know what it is. It's not swamp milkweed, some other kind of milkweed. And down there, I'm trying to grow. Um, that blew my mind, morning glory. If it gets as big as it usually does, it's gonna fill in that whole space. Now I had pots there and I had to tear them out because I'm I've encircled the whole circle garden with pots to keep the armadillo out and it is working he he doesn't bother it so uh, i'm hoping that that'll continue to be the case but let's talk about this quadrant again right here so swamp milkweed here uh wild bergamot there mock bishop's weed and then wild petunia liatris this uh, Dara right here is looking sad. It's got something on it. I am going to mix up a few dots of um, Dawn, a two, few drops of Dawn dishwa uh, bleh, dishwashing detergent, the blue kind, the original, and I'm going to spray it because there's some sort of aphidy thing on it and it's not happy. There's still a little bit of uh, lemon balm in there and then uh, Snapdragon right there. And then this purple stuff right here is Verbena bonariensis. Don't you love it? And then this, I've forgotten what it's called, but this is also something that is going to be good for the swallowtails. And then that pink down there, of course, is Arpentas right there. And then that's a lissom. And that right there is uh, Achillea that I started from seed or yarrow or yarrow. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Uh, that, it may turn out to be a poppy flower. I mean, I know it is a poppy, but I don't know if it's going to flower because <clears throat> it's kind of late in the season. They don't like uh, hot weather. So I am not sure if that's going to bloom or not. That's another salvia. And then I've got another penta right there. But, oh, look at this. It's shocking, but it's true. Look, the lavenders are still alive, these two at least. And then this is that pineapple mint that I was telling y'all about earlier. And look, it's blooming. Isn't it pretty? It's trying to escape. Look at this. Ooh, naughty. Not gonna let it. Not, I'm gonna cut that off. Say no, no, no escape. And my daughter bought me this foxglove for Mother's Day and it is so cute. It's peach and it stayed alive during this past week, which is a miracle because I've never had foxglove before. I didn't know whether I could keep them alive. So it's still, um, it seems to be happy. So we'll see. I love the way it's, uh, it's kind of bent and goofy looking. It looks, it looks better from the other direction when you see it against the, uh, oh, but isn't it sweet? 
Don't y'all love them? Oh, I hope, if I can grow this, then I'm definitely gonna be encouraged to grow more uh, next year and buy some when I see them. I've just never forked out the money for one because I felt like I would kill it and it would make me sad. I have killed a lot of things. That's what you have to do to be a gardener, actually. <laughs> so this is Stokes Aster and it's blooming. And then this is um, Swamp Milkweed. And it's gonna, these two things are gonna get massive. I mean, you see that over there and that, that is Swamp Milkweed. I mean, it, that's just one plant. So I've got these two things that are gonna get massive in this pot. Um, I'm eventually, definitely, probably pretty soon going to have to get them out and put them in their own pots. Because see, this is Stokes Aster. This is a two-year growth of Stokes Aster, and it's going to bloom soon. And I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to show y'all. Look at this Menara uh, Bee Balm uh, Bergamot. Uh, it is going to be busting out too. Ooh, I can't wait to show y'all these colors all together. I hope that nothing happens to them. But this is the perennial bed. We're not, we're not talking about that right now. We're gonna go back to the circle garden. Sorry, get off, off course. This is pineapple sage. It's red. I don't want it back here. You know, I don't want red back here. But um, what's funny is we were sitting here the other day and I was telling my daughter about it because we used to make tea with this. I mean, the leaves you can make tea with, uh, the flowers are edible and you can like suck on them like honeysuckle. And so we happened to be doing that and she was like, but what about this one? And I think this is what we've determined is that Amistad salvia. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna show y'all a trick, but you, well, anyway, I'm just gonna show y'all. So let me turn this around. All right, so this is a salvia flower and I like to pinch off the little uh, green thing on the end and, and you suck out the juice and, and it's sweet. I mean, it's good and you can eat the flower too. Okay, so let me show you something else. Now I looked all over the internet and um, no one said that you could eat uh, salvia amistad or the flowers. But um, guess what, with the flowers, okay, so there's, wait, you see that purple end, the dark purple end? You pull that off, I'm just gonna, I have teeth. And then it's got so much sweet juice in it. Like I know why the um, hummingbirds are going crazy over this stuff because it is, I mean, it is noticeable how much more sugar is in this sugar juice, is in this salvia amistad compared to the pineapple sage. So um, no one says that they're edible. So I'm not telling you that they're edible and I'm not telling you that you can go out there and drink the juice. I've just done it a couple of times and I'm not dead yet. So there's that. I've got some other really exciting things growing in the circle garden over here in this quadrant that I would I would call it the quadrant um, this of course is that jewels of opar it's it's a native plant and so I wish it, I had some flowers on it and I know I've shown it to you a jillion times because I just love it so much the uh, leaves are edible although I mean they're not super yummy or anything but um and then I've got of course right there that's the wild petunia and these are those blue-eyed grass I don't think they're liking this pot and I'm probably going to have to dig it out and plant it in the ground inside the circle garden where it'll be safer um, from, you know, the armadillos. Um, this is plumbago. It is just starting to bloom and it's gotten rather tall. All that is plumbago right there. And then, you know, I've got that. Um, I think it's called you know what I don't remember what it's called but that pink salvia right there in that pot with some calibracoa and this is coreopsis this yellow that's tick seed and coreopsis and then that is um, swamp milkweed right there and then I've got achillea or yarrow and then that yellow flowering plant that the eastern black swallowtails like that I can't think of the name of but it's a wild flower and this is some kind of wildflower too that I don't know the name of and it hasn't bloomed yet. And I don't recall if it has ever bloomed for me. So this side of the circle garden is a little more shady. 
you know, in the afternoon. And so that's why I have, although coleus doesn't need shade, I just kind of have it over here. And this pot, I'm going to rescue these little coleus right here because the armadillo is naughty, for lack of a better word, naughty, naughty, naughty. And um, I've grown, I've, I've planted some other things that I'm really excited about coming up. This is, um, no, oh, goldenrod. It's going to be fireworks goldenrod. And then this right here is ironweed. So that's going to be purple. It's going to be really tall uh, with feathery kind of purple flowers and, you know, ironweed. Uh, and then the goldenrod is going to be really tall and it's going to have yellow, you know, golden. Um, oh, it's just, it's going to look really pretty when it all flowers. And then just some other things over here that I've rescued. Some milkweed, that white one, and some vinca. And um, I also have another possible poppy uh, flower. We'll see. I'm, I'm so surprised that these poppies are making it because they have looked ratty and sad and pathetic this whole season. Another thing that looks ratty and sad and pathetic is that salvia there and that one over there. They, uh, they got some kind of mildewy thing on them and uh, I cut them back and then they grew back and they still have that mildewy thing on them. So I'm probably going to just rip those out and replace them with uh, something else. So this quadrant of the circle garden will need a little bit of, maybe I'll throw some seeds in here since I don't think the armadillo will be able to come in and dig them up and maybe I can start something from seed. But you can see last night, he came to the edge and dug right there and wasn't able to get through. So ha <laughs> ha, jokes on him. Um, or maybe me, I don't know. But here is a hydrangea. And I'm liking that it's um, blooming pink. For a while, I wanted some blue ones and purple ones, but I've got so much purple with the, um, the Agastache being so purple. I mean, just like, there's a lot of purple going on. So I'm happy that the hydrangeas are actually blooming pink. And here are some more of them. And these hydrangeas are lace cap hydrangeas. I actually didn't know which one they were going to be because I had started these from cuttings. And then, you know how you tell yourself you're going to remember what it is that you did? Oh, no, I didn't remember. So then I just had to guess and just plant them wherever they don't. Oh, and look at this. That's Love in a Mist. That came up from seeds from last year. Isn't it just so pretty? I'm loving the blue. I have some white Love in a Mist over there that's growing across the um, path. You know, it's there's hardly any path, but I am liking that. I don't mind. I want this garden to be packed full of plants. I don't want to see any bare surface actually at all. That's why I wanted to grow some things between the um, path stones and not grass. I have a little bit of Spanish moss growing from the lemon tree. Isn't that neat? I'll zoom in a little bit for you so you can see it. Yeah, so that's living on the lemon tree. Uh, this area right here just really gets no attention. And now I'm kind of using it as a path. This is between the lemon tree and the tangerine tree. I have this giant fennel growing right here. And I keep checking it every day to see if it's got caterpillars or, and it doesn't. And then of course this agastache is growing huge, but I don't have a way to walk through here. So I have to like step around things. This is that Bobo hydrangea from last year. I think it's gonna come back. Uh, it's looking good. Um, and I'm just letting that lemon balm kind of line this path right here. So in a few minutes, I'm going to show you some video about a snake that was in the garden this week. And uh, it was very interesting. Um, I actually did enjoy seeing him here. Um, it was in the middle of the day and he poked his little head up from right here out of the lemon balm. And then I came a little closer to try to video him and he had a dragonfly on his head. It was the cutest thing. 
And then I saw the end of his tail. I was like, oh, wow, uh, he's a lot bigger than I thought. And uh, he kind of hid in, uh, down here and he poked his head out right there. And when I tried to come closer, he turned around and he slithered up under the lemon tree here. And I will show you footage of that <clears throat> in just a little bit. And then I came back around because he had poked his head out over here and he didn't really like that. So I was like, oh gosh, you know what? I'm gonna go in. And when I went in, I told my daughter that there was a snake out here and she looked out the window and she saw him and he was proceeding to leave the yard. And so she was like, oh, I wanna see him closer. So we went out to look at him, but, um, and he was leaving. But then all of a sudden he whipped around the tree and kind of like came at us and we went running and screaming and I accidentally videoed it. And so it's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm gonna share it with you. got to show you this either wild ginger or well I don't know if it's wild ginger but it's either ginger or turmeric and it's blooming in my front yard and look at this look at this is that not gorgeous oh my gosh this is the first time it's flowered I had it last year and I think it's supposed to be variegated I'm hoping that that the coloring on it doesn't mean that it like is lacking nutrition but isn't it just lovely? And this is something that I know is ginger and I'm growing it in a pot and I'm growing it with uh, some, oh, there goes the lizard. Uh, growing it with some uh, castor bean plant, which is gonna be really cool. It's already flowering. This is, this is castor bean plant right here. Isn't that neat? Isn't it, it's so easy to grow from seed, y'all. I mean, like, and it grows as big as a tree. It's just, oof. It is very interesting looking. Um, I, I have gotten a kick out of it. I planted seeds in all of these pots here because I was like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe they'll come up. And they are. They're not looking as big as they were last year. But, of course, this is only May. So, we shall see. And then I've got this uh, tropical milkweed that grew from seed here. And uh, so it's, I'm really liking these colors all together. They can't belong in the backyard, but in the front, I let them do their thing. Y'all remember how last week it was on Sunday that our uh, Black Eastern Swallowtail Caterpillar had gotten into the position to turn into a chrysalis. And that afternoon, he did turn into a chrysalis. I expected him to do it like on the top of the... Uh, cage or something but he did it on the fennel which was kind of not a good idea because fennel is so ephemeral and if he is going to last for a year this fennel would not be here so I'm hoping that he knows something that I don't know and that maybe in a week 
he will emerge because he's been in a chrysalis for a whole week now. Look at this cute toad. It might be a leopard spotted uh, toad. Isn't he cute? He was um, in the same spot this morning when I walked by. I sure hope that snake wasn't going after him because he's just adorable and this looks like his little place that he lives. This broadhead skink was in the circle garden and he was about a foot long. He's got a little petal against his cheek. That's just a petal of the salvia. I love how it looks like I'm in a cornfield. I mean, it looks like I'm coming at you from a West Kentucky cornfield. If you watch Big Tractor Power, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but no, it's the Gulf Coast and it's Alabama. Um, but y'all, thank you so much for coming with me and uh, looking at my garden. And uh, I can't wait to find out what's happening in y'all's garden. Y'all have a great week. Thanks.